Hey guys, I wonder how many of you remember Pong? According to Wikipedia, it came out in 1972. So it would be unfair to compare this with today's Call of Duty or GTA. Actually, what got me started on this project was not the original Pong from 1972, but the one I saw on Reddit. I'll link it to the description on YouTube if you want to see it. That inspired me to make my own version. My goal is to make it as simple as possible so anyone can make it, learn from it, and hopefully even create their own variations. So if you make one, please link it in the comments. I'd love to see it. Let's get started. So the first part is just a plain old Nokia 5110 LCD. They're about 250 each from eBay. <laughs> then we need a 1K resistor for the backlight and two potentiometers to control the paddles. Of course, we're going to need an Arduino. This beeper is optional, but I think it adds to the game. However, while testing, I find the beeper really annoying, so I added a switch. Optional, you can add an extra battery and a power switch, but you can also just power it using the USB from your PC. And finally, of course, you need some wires and a breadboard to put it all together. I think it's pretty amazing what could be accomplished with just a few components. LCD, two potentiometers, and some beeper, and battery, and an Arduino. That's it. So let's take a look a little bit of how it is wired together. Let's talk about the LED first. So it's mounted like this, one through eight. So the one is actually on the other side labeled. That one is actually reset. I think that's uh, chip enable to enable the LCD display. Data versus command selection. Data coming in clock, VCC is 5 volt, the backlight LED, that's why there's 1K resistor here, and actually uh, in real life I do not have that switch, but you could have a switch for your backlight. Interestingly enough, they wire it such that the plus is hard-coded in here, and it is the negative that turns it on and off, so that's why it's going to negative, that is correct. And then of course there's ground. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we look at the software. The beeper is pretty simple, connect that to D2, like I said I put a switch because it gets annoying after a while. And this like I said is optional, you can have an actual battery in there with the battery holder and a switch so you can turn it on and off, but you could as easily just power it off the USB port. One of the things that makes the Arduino so awesome is the amount of libraries available for it. Just about any device you could think of, there's probably somebody already written a library for it. We'll be using the U8Glib library so we can concentrate on the game rather than worrying about how to drive the LCD. Most libraries comes with a whole bunch of examples. Once you load up the library, they will show up under file examples. Let's try Hello World to make sure our LCD is working. One of the first things you'll notice is the large amount of LCDs that this library supports. Through a little googling, I discovered that my Nokia 5110 LCD uses a PCD8544 chip. So this is the one I uncomment for my LCD. Had I wired my LCD exactly like it says in the sketch, there's really no other change to the sketch. But I like my wires to be straight, so I rearranged these last three pins. The 8, 9, and 10 is now wired slightly different than the default one. The other two pins, the clock and data in, cannot be changed. They must stay on pin 11 and 13. Okay, let's upload the sketch and see what happened. It worked great, but it's upside down, so let's fix that. This library is awesome. Look at, you can just flip the screen by making another call. Let's try that. Check it out. Okay, now that we know our screen is working, let's start working on the game. So by removing all this commented code and some of the code that I know I don't need, such as color, because my display is black and white, I was able to simplify the code to just these few lines. So that's the library, that's initialization, that's to fix our screen rotation. And the only thing that I changed really is this guy right here. That used to be a draw right there, and that draw used to draw the hello world right here. 
and I change it to just basically draw a rectangle, a 4x4 four four rectangle, at location 00. zero. So let's see how it looks. Not a bad start, huh? So to animate the ball, we need some variables. And we have a ball x and a ball direction x. And then whenever we need to move the ball, we'll just increment it by the direction. And then we do some checking uh, for the range to make sure it doesn't go off screen. OK, let's try this. Holy cow, that's way too fast. So let's slow down a little bit. It is very tempting to put the delay right here, but it's actually a bad idea because a delay will stop right here and nothing else could happen during this delay. And we know we are going to actually be reading two paddles. So if we put a delay in here, then the paddle will not be as responsive. To get around that, we use a common technique using millis. Let me show you. All right, that's more like it. All we did is we create a new variable called time to move and the animation speed. Instead of always moving the ball, now we check this millis. Millis is the number of milliseconds since we turn on the Arduino. So basically we say, is that number greater than time to move? Which we did not initialize, so it's actually zero. So the first time through, it will be greater than zero. And so we will actually move the ball. And then right after we move the ball variable, we set the time to move to be whatever it is now, plus a certain amount, which is uh, 20 milliseconds here. This allows us to put other operations over here and uh, we will not slow anything down because even though it's being called very quickly, it's never going to stop there. It will only do this every 20 milliseconds. So other operation will not have to wait for this operation. Before we move on to the paddle, let's also make the ball move in the y direction. So I discovered by doing a search on width that I could find out how wide the screen is. And so I created two variables for the width and the height there. And then instead of hard coding four, I put the ball size in here. So in case we decide to make the ball smaller or bigger, we could change that variable. And then uh, I just copied the ball x position and the direction into the y. Basically, I copied these lines and created these lines for the y position. And here is where I set up the width and the height based on the call from the library. And that's it. So let's see that run. Well, check it out. It's looking more and more like a Pong game, huh? To keep track of the paddles, I've created a couple more variables. These are the actual analog pins on the Arduino that we use for the left and right potentiometers. These are the width and height of the actual paddle. Both left and right are the same, so I'm using the same variables. And since the only difference between the left and right paddles are the position, like the X position, one will be on the very left side and the other one will be on the very right side, and which analog pin we are using to control them. And I call this function twice right here, once here and once there. And this is the one that I call from the main loop right there. So let's take a look at how the pedal works. At the core of it is another draw box, you know, at the position where the pedal is. This one is passed in, either on the leftmost or the rightmost. And this one we compute vertically where they are based on the analog read. And that's the width and height of the pedal. Let me explain this one on paper. I think it will be easier to visualize. The Arduino map function is pretty cool. You can do all this by just doing the math, but this function makes it really easy to translate different ranges. So our potentiometer ranges from 0 through 5 volts, which by using the analog read will actually range from 0 through 1023. But our screen is not 0 to 1023. Our screen is actually only 0 through 64. And subtracting the height of the paddle, actually it goes from 0 through 60. Using the map function, you simply pass in all these values like this. So you say map. The value you want is basically the analog read. Low is the 0. And the high is the 1023. And we want to translate that range to this range, which is 0 through 60. That's it. And that will spit out the value. Let's say this is in the, exactly in the middle. That will be like 30. You know, as you go that direction, it will be like 15. It will go this direction, it will be like 55. All that taken care of with just this one line. Let's see it work. Uh, here's our paddle. So as I go one direction, it goes that way, the other direction. So when it's 0 through 1023, translated to 0 through like 60 or whatever, they both work. 
but we don't have the code to actually check to make sure that if they miss the ball like that, <laughs> it's still bouncing around. So that's that, that. Rather than checking to see if the ball hits the paddle at every single time, we only need to check it when the ball either hits the right side of the screen or the left side of the screen. So when the ball reaches the right side of the screen, for instance, all we need to do to figure out whether this player misses the ball or not is to see if the ball is above the paddle or below the paddle. Since the ball is actually not a single pixel, we need to compute the top of the ball, the bottom of the ball, and make sure that if the bottom of the ball is actually less than the top of the paddle, that means they are in this area somewhere and they have missed the ball. Likewise, if the top of the ball is greater than the bottom of the paddle, that means they're in this area somewhere and they have also missed the ball. Okay, I just have to add a couple more variables. This will keep track of where the paddle is. We already computed before, but we didn't have a variable that we could check, so that's what this is for. This is the routine we just talked about to determine whether the ball hit the paddle or not. The move ball changes a little bit, so now when the ball hits the left side of the screen, we check if it hits the paddle or not. And then this is on the other side, so if the ball is all the way on the right side of the screen, then we check the paddle again. This time we check the right paddle instead of the left paddle. And if they miss, we call this one. The only difference between these two, yeah, let's go back to that. So if player zero missed the ball, that's the left side. We move the ball to the other side of the court on the right side. And then we allow player one's Y position, the vertical position of player one, to determine where the ball will start getting served. And this is the exact opposite. If player one missed the ball, we want to move the ball to the other side, which is uh, almost zero. And then we allow player zero's paddle to determine where the ball will start getting served. Because we need to know where the paddles are, we now save the paddle position into these two variables. But the actual calculation stays the same. So let's see it run. So as you can see, when I miss on this side, it appears on the other side. But if I hit this side and actually work, it actually detects and then I'm going to try to miss on the other side. So now if I miss it on that side, it appears on that side. The game is playable, but it's not much fun without scoring. Actually, now that it's not beeping, I miss it. <laughs> so let's add that too. It is a lot more fun with... Oh. <laughs> it is a lot more fun with the sound. And I get, as you can see, I also get it to speed up. So every time, maybe a little bit too fast to speed up. But every time it bounces, it speeds up the animation, make it more challenging. And as you can see, there's score too. So this player just lost and uh, this player just lost. So he, so now I'm going to make this guy lose. When one side is reached three, the game is over. That's adjustable, of course. This still moves even though the game is over, but the ball doesn't bounce. But your imagination is the limit. So please feel free to take the source, play with it, make it better. If you do, please share in the comments. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.